Okay, in this video, we're going to join a workstation, specifically an XP workstation, to a Novell Domain Services for Windows domain. And really, it's the same process as joining an AD domain. If you're familiar with that, then you'll this will be uh, a piece of cake for you. If you're familiar, if you've never done this before, then uh, I'll show you a couple of ways to do it. There's the way through the GUI, and there's the Net DOM. Uh, method. There are also scripts out there that you can use to join a workstation to the domain. Uh, there's so there's a lot of different scripts out there if you just look for scripts to join a workstation to the domain. Now some considerations that we have that we're joining a workstation to the domain. So first of all, we want to make sure it has a unique name. So there's this TID right here, seven zero zero six eight five one. So the workstations with duplicate names. Uh, join to the domain costs low lo logins. Uh, there is a way to alleviate that. Uh, it, th this tid goes right right through it, and things to to look out for look out for it in the trace to see, may see and KDC log specifically to see if we have a problem uh, with a uh, uh, a duplicate workstation uh, and, and ways to alleviate it so that we don't get a conflict. And what we mean by a duplicate workstation is if we look at our workstation, uh, so w this is a workstation we're going to join. We're going to right click on the my computers, go to computer's name. So any way you want to get the system properties, doesn't matter, that's my way. Here's our computer name, XP Pro 1. If we had a workstation that was already joined with that name, and if we looked at it, let's just uh, pull up iManager. So if we look in our computers, that's uh, compu configuration computers container. If there was an XP1, that that uh, workstation it has a password that is set by the workstation. Now, so there's a password. The workstation has set the password. The workstation knows what the password is on the the con the object that will be created here. When a new workstation is joined, and if it has that exact same name, it's going to take that same object and it's going to reset the password. So the first workstation that has joined the domain will not be able to access the domain. Its password will be invalid and it will continue to try and try and try and that can cause uh, some some issues with your domain if you get enough of those happening. And again, there are ways to, if that happens, that at least it will not be causing uh, slowness on your domain specifically creating an intruder lockout at, at the location where your workstations are are at. So that's our first thing. I just wanted to get that out of the way. Be, be aware of that. Second is by default the workstations are added to the computers container. It is possible to use NetDOM to move computers to another container or when you're joining to join and place the, the workstation object in another container. So there's some that say, you know, at their site, they might have a workstations container that they created, and that's where they want the workstations for. And and uh, this con and this partition, or the site site B, say, uh, we want the workstations to be in the workstations container at that level. So it is possible to to, to do that. If you do, just be aware of the password policies. Again, uh, we've talked about the different types of password policies that, or the, that we had set, but there are three that are set by default here, and they're in the systems container and password policies. These are it, built-in, default, and domain. Now let's go look at it with the actual plugin so you can make a little more sense of it. Password policies. Uh, so we just want to, well, we're using it already. So if, y if you're not there, by default, it will be looking under the securities container. Just hit this browse button and browse to your domain systems and then password policies. Y you can see where they are assigned right here. Signed at built in computers. And this is assigned, says it's assigned at Novell, but we know better. We've created our own. Uh, the ultimate decider on this is what the NSPM password policy DN attribute says on the container itself. So we say we see here that default password policy is used from computers. If you have another computers container or workstations container, I would use this default password policy, assign it to that container, or create a password policy that has the, the same uh, same rules as uh, as this one. Specifically, 
uh, do not expire user's password administrator changes it uh, the 42 days that's that's up to you but uh, the uh, right here allow numeric characters and alphanumeric characters n or non alphanumeric characters uh, those are th your workstation will set a strong password it needs to be able to to set those if if those are not enabled then he it's you're going to have a problem joining the workstation to the domain something else to confi to consider Th by default, the workstation changes its workstation or machine account password every 30 days. That can be changed. You can change it per workstation. You can change it on your GPO so that every workstation gets assigned it. So it's, say, every 60 days or 90 days. If you do that or if you disable it altogether, be aware of the password policy that it's going to say every 42 days, change the password. So there could be a conflict there. If you disable that altogether, and there are people I've talked to that disable it because the, they've had problems with AD, with, it, with uh, password policies changing, uh, it can be the same, same things can happen uh, in DSFW. Uh, workstations sometimes just don't get it right as far as setting up, setting their passwords or resetting their passwords. So there are some that will just disable that, that it does not change, or they will extend it to 90 days out. Again, password policy, make sure you adjust that accordingly. If you do it 90 days, adjust it to uh, you know, 95, 100 days, a little bit past, or just uncheck it altogether. Okay, so that's our, our password policy that's set up for the computers. Talked about duplicate, possible duplicate workstation uh, th th when uh, joining. Also, the computer's container, if you want to have an admin, that does specifically joining workstations to the domain. Give them the uh, we select here, modify our trustees. We just give a user. We can add a trustee here and uh, give them uh, specific uh, rights that we need to to join. Say user one. We want them to 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 do it. We just specifically create. So by 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 default, you get entry browse. You need you're gonna have need to have. Uh, create and possibly rename at least at a minimum. Also for your attributes, uh, I, I haven't gone through to see which exact attributes are needed, but uh, if you just did all attributes and you did right, uh, you should be you should be safe. So I that go. But that's what you th I an or you can just give them supervisory rights to that computer's container. And if you have containers below it, uh, set the IRF. Uh, so that uh, they don't have e uh, rights below. Anyway, these are all e-directory type rights to, to think about. Now, in actually joining the workstation to the domain, as you say, here's our our workstation name. We want to uh, put the name of the domain here, but before we actually do that, we just want to make sure that our time is in sync if we check on there and we check over here, it's within needs to be within five minutes. And if if it is, then you should be good. Uh, if you have a problem, you might want to use like net time or there's a, a configurations registry changes you can do on a workstation that so that it is using an NTP server also. Now uh, that also daylight savings time that comes around. That can change things. That could cause a problem. You might say, see, the workstation and server are exactly the same as, as far as time, but it's not working. You take a LAN trace and you see a Kerberos error, a clock skew error, which means time is off. There might be a, a problem. Maybe you need to get your workstation patched. Maybe there's, there's something with uh, daylight savings time that's screwing things up a little bit. Also, the time zone. Make sure that your time zone is set correctly too. Another piece to look at is NSLOOKUP. So we just want to see what server we're using. Again, we're using our DSFW server. That is our DNS server. So NSLOOKUP DSFW.novel.com. We're going to make sure that we hit it. DSFW1, we're able to resolve the server we cannot resolve it we're not going to be able to join the domain 
Okay, here we go. It's going to join the domain. I need to log in. Let's use administrator. And we'll get a message that we have joined the dsfw.novel.com domain. There we go. You can use NetDOM. Like I said, you'll have to do you a NetDOM add to create the account and then join NetDOM join to join. Uh, the syntax, you can look it up. It's just uh, not jet dom, net dom, uh, your workstation name, or sorry, join your workstation name, XP Pro 1, and our D for our domain, and our user, capital D for our domain, which will be our, our domain user administrator and the password for the domain. Once you do that, so in this case it's just Novell. You could also do a reboot. Re, boy, I'm not spelling well at all. Reboot, colon, and then uh, say five seconds or ten seconds so it reboots automatically. Uh, these are just some things you can do. If uh, Again, if, if you don't have the account created first, that is the object in if we just uh, do a refresh here see if we didn't have that created first we did need to do an add first to, to create this and then do a join anyway that would be the command so we'll just reboot and check back in in just uh, a minute and we'll be joined to the domain okay uh, we're back see with XP it's kinda nice you, you can select your your domain you don't have to do the domain slash user so we, we got our user we're gonna log in and when after we log in it will, it will create our profile on this workstation and this is decided by the GPO by default this is what's gonna happen if you want to have a roaming profile store it on your server uh, sync it up with your server whatever you want to do it there's there's uh, options to do that so we are now joined to the domain if we wanted to we could go and map a drive to the domain and uh, just uh, So sysfall is it by default? I could use the the name of the of it. So we mapped a drive. We didn't get prompted for a password. Assign it. We've got it. Again, we we could do the browse, and select it. Sometimes this takes a little while to the very first time you you joined for it to to come up. So I just like to do sir the IP address just to make sure I I get it. Um, if you're using your GPO uh, GPO management tool, you want to map a drive to your sysfall as administrator, and you'll want to use it with the domain name slash sysfall. Just uh, something to be aware of. So yeah, it's just a little bit slow right now. Uh, I've got some a lot of memory used up on this box, and and uh, it's taking us time. But anyway, we we went through and just joined it real quick. So you see, join to the domain. That's how you do it. GUI or with the NetDOM utility, or again, if you find a script out there, you could use that. So I hope that's uh, helped you in understanding how to join a workstation to a DSFW domain. Thanks.